In this episode of the Shoebox Ford Build Series, I show you how we built this trunk setup. That is so satisfying. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another Shoebox Ford build video. Uh, so today what we're doing is I'm going to show you exactly how I made this whole false floor for the trunk. And what this is, is this is a wood floor, it's a wood false floor that sits above the existing steel floor, smooths the whole thing out, gives you a nice clean, um, nice clean place to put things like your luggage or groceries or whatever you might be hauling with it. Um, and one really cool thing is it still has a place to store all of your fluids and spare parts. So it keeps it all down there where it can make a mess. God forbid, I hope it doesn't. But if it does, it's not going to end up all over the other things in your trunk that you might not want to have oil on. So I'm stoked about how this came out and I want to show you guys exactly how I did it. So thanks for tuning in and uh, let's go right back to the beginning. Okay guys, uh, it's a new day. I got a few more things ready. I needed to go pick up a couple of pieces. Um, so I'm gonna explore a few different ways to try and cut this out. And I picked up a couple of router bits uh, that are sort of di different uh, thicknesses because I'm not positive how big I want the gap to be on the little door that I'm gonna try and build into this thing. But um, We'll worry about that a little bit later on. Right now, we gotta take the template that we put together from the other day, or really the basis of the template, and we gotta start cutting that up and fitting it into the trunk. Now, what I did to the trunk was, uh, because this is a sort of soft, flexible template, it's not really solid like a, you know, a heavy cardboard wood, um, it needs to be supported. So I found a piece of plywood that I already had sitting around to just kind of in storage, just quarter inch piece, toss that in there. It's going to work out perfect for giving it some support across the center section. So we're going to set this in there, kind of get a look at it and um, really start doing our trimming right away. Um, I think what I'm going to start out with is trying to get that front curvature uh, correct. I'm literally just going to take this piece of round stock that I've got and it's, it was already used for some silly project uh, for mounting a camera that just never worked out. So I'm going to straighten it out, cut the ends off that have the gusset plates on it and this little thing and uh, use that. And I'm going to bend it and I'm going to try and build the or match the curvature of the front of the trunk so that I can put that on here and get that first mark done and then try and cut that out on the template first, because I think we're gonna work from the front to the back. Uh, the back is gonna be hidden, and it'll be a little bit easier if there's any quirks back there, if it's not perfectly straight. I can try and fix it, but um, if it has to be hidden towards the back side, that's not the end of the world. So anyway, let's uh, just get started. When it comes to making a template of something, you kinda just have to dive in. Let's uh, toss this in the back of the trunk after we start bending this guy up. All right.
maybe what we'll do is we'll cut this whole section out. And then we'll build a filler piece to, to just fill in there, slide in. Cut small first, because you can always trim back. It's of course easier this way. Give yourself a nice reference line. Okay, so that's confirm. Eleven inches. Go over here. That's about our line, so we'll go 11 inches. Okay. I'm gonna retire this marker after this. Few little changes I think I'm gonna make. I know that I need to trim this guy out a little bit more and I think what I'm gonna do is actually fill this section right here. So I've got a line there and a line there. So I will most likely fill those um, and then make a template from that whole back corner and do that one after because I'm gonna fit the air compressor back here I think. It'll look a little cleaner, it'll be nice and hidden. And if I put walls, you know, like a, a filler piece that comes up here to hide behind the tail tail light, uh, it'll be sweet because then it'll also kind of help with noise. It'll it'll maybe keep the air compressor noise back here a little bit more, not in the cabin. So uh, let's trim off these next couple pieces. Okay, I got a game plan now. So I've decided I am going to actually just make a nice straight cut right here. So I am gonna, I know that I need to give myself about an eighth of an inch extra beyond the template here. So when I go to cut all of this out, I'm gonna have to remember that. Um, but as far as this line goes on the template, um, I'm gonna make this nice and straight. We're gonna add a little filler right here but the rest of this is gonna be a nice straight line. And the reason for that is I'm gonna make a filler plate that's gonna go in the back side here, or a, a X, it's sort of like a secondary piece. So when this thing gets installed, I will slide that back piece in and lock it in. We'll fasten it in whatever measure I'll decide at that time. But um, what's gonna be nice about that is then you've got a slightly smaller footprint on this whole thing. And the reason that's valuable for us is that um, you, this is a, a rigid piece that we're putting in. And this is floppy. So if you notice when I go to set it in there, I have it bent and curved, and then I flop it into place and piece of cake, it, it can be very large, it can be lot, much larger than the opening of the trunk and it'll fit in there. But when you go to move the actual solid rigid piece in there, you don't have that flexibility. So you're kind of playing Tetris to try and like change the shape or, or move it around to try and wiggle it in. Kind of like if you ever put a really big couch through a door, you know that you gotta kind of like do the bend and twist and because <laughs> the arms are obviously bigger and the part where your ass sits has got this 90 degree bend. You know you're kind of maneuvering things through, through that funny angles and stuff. It's kind of similar with stuff like um, if you're building stuff to fit inside of a vehicle. So, um, I'm going to cut this off and it'll be easier to fit in the trunk that way and then I'll build that other piece to fit in, fit behind it. So um, that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to cut this guy off straight and toss that little filler piece in right here. Then we'll throw it in one more time to just make sure it's how we want it and we're almost to the point now where we're going to start cutting out the plywood.
Well, I'm really happy with this. I think it fits pretty good. We'll do all of like the fine tuning when it comes to the actual plywood. But right now I think this fits pretty good. We've got the important things. We've got like the line over here that's butted up against the, the battery. We've got the fender well that fits right. The other fender well that fits right. A nice straight line right there. So we know that we can build our piece that'll fill in the back side there. But, yep, I might curve these areas here. Make it a little, a little nicer. So I think what I'm going to do is try and just toss that spare tire in really quick and see how that sits with this cardboard in there. Like it fits, but your space between here and here gets a little tighter. So if we were to make this a little more rigid, let's say we put some some weight on it. Hits there. There it hits. Okay. That's going to affect how you get the tire in and out. Which makes me think I need to go more... I need to open this front corner up more. Or I need to make this removable. Well, if you make it removable, you can make it fit way tighter, too. So... Maybe I need to make the front section here removable or like on a hinge. So I don't need to worry about securing that back side, like having a plate that goes across. Because if I have this hinged up, then it just drops down and that's it. It just sits there. So I could put a little teeny hinge under there. So you might see a little hinge there, which is kind of a shame. I could always paint it black, I suppose. That tips up. Then you can easily roll your tire in and out. So yeah, that's probably the move. And then we're gonna do curve. The curve could start here, and then it curves, and then it's going to get cut. So this whole thing could be on a hinge, and that flips up. That way you can roll the tire out. Yep, that's the way to do it. the exciting part now we get to like line this thing up so I'm gonna pull it as far forward as I can where the bottom of the curve ends here we're gonna line up this edge square it up it's all the way up there because I can just take a sander to get that perfect Double check, make sure this edge is correct, which it is.
looks good. So we'll just uh, we'll build a little door in here. That center section flips open for storage underneath. There's a ton of room that we're going to get from that. It's actually really rigid as it is. I'm very happy with how this has turned out. All right, on to the next step. All right. start forming it. So there's my arc. right there. sand this thing down.
Well, this is looking pretty awesome. Get those pieces cleaned up. The cutout looks pretty nice. It's not perfect, but it's close enough. All the lines are smoothed out. All right, time to test fit. So I'm going to be using uh, pocket hole fasteners and what's cool about these is you don't see the fastener from the top side so I'm just going to be basically you drill a hole in at an angle and the fastener runs in so I'll get I'll show you exactly how this works So there you go, and your collar helps you set your depth. I've gotten this set up ages ago. I built all the cabinets in the garage with this method because it's just, it's so clean. This one will keep it simple, we'll just do three. And another cool thing, if you have to do this in a visible place, you can actually get plugs that mimic this exact same size hole that even have the right so the cut sits like flush on the wood, so you can stain it and it'll match. So then it takes a square bit, and the fastener is very simple, one and a quarter inch length, square bit top. They lock in nicely. Sometimes you want to clamp this, but I don't actually need to. Not for this. requires a tiny bit more effort to just set up, but really it's it's incredibly simple. Now, these, the jigs are all made by a brand called Craig, or Craig. Um, 
I love the stuff that they have. I've used their tools for basically every cabinet job, every, um, just all of my woodworking. So the reason that the hinge is going to be on the top side like this is because I've decided I am going to carpet it. Uh, and then the carpet can actually just cover it up. Makes it a little bit easier. Okay, well there we go. That's part one of the shoebox for trunk setup. Uh, hopefully this was really helpful and it showed you guys the technique that we used to make the template, the tools that we used for cutting and shaping everything, and what we're going to show you in part two is all the finish work. We're going to do things like cover it in carpet. We're going to show you a really cool setup that we're doing to make the little hatch door actually pop up and automatically lift. It's pretty sweet. I love the outcome, so I'm excited for you guys to see that. Thanks for tuning into part one. Make sure to check out part two.